Today's video is a little bit different than normal. This isn't a build guide or a tutorial or anything like that. Instead, I'm gonna show you what's inside my home server, what I use my home server for, and what I plan to do with it in the future. Hopefully that's interesting enough. Let's get into it. Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf. Today I'm gonna to be showing you guys all around my home server and hopefully it'll give you some inspiration to create your own home server or at least give you some ideas. And if you're new here and you wanna see more PC hardware or PC building videos, then hit that subscribe button down below and also that notification bell. That way you never miss an episode. But before we get into it, let me quickly introduce the sponsor of today's video, yourcdkey.com. Yourcdkey.com is an official online platform that sells all types of keys, including official Microsoft Windows keys, game keys such as Steam, Origin, and Uplay, and they even sell prepaid cards like for PSN and Xbox. Your CD key is hooking you guys up with a crazy 20% off sale if you use discount code ZTT20. For those of you that are still rocking an unactivated Windows, Windows 10, type in Windows 10 Pro at the top, click buy now, and enter the discount code ZTT20. And as you can see here, that drops the price down to less than $12, which is amazing. Head on down to the first links in the description for both Windows 10 and even Microsoft Office, which drops down to just $31 with ZTT20. All right, so first up, I wanna talk about what I'm actually using this server for, and then we'll get into the hardware and my future plans. This server here that's built inside the Antec P101 silent case, which we'll talk about in just a minute, is basically my NAS slash Plex server slash media player. The reason why it's my media player is because as you can see here in my makeshift server cabinet, I have a monitor on top of it and this is where I'll watch a TV show or a movie when I'm down here in the studio at my desk. Now honestly, I don't use this as a media player too often, but every now and then if I don't need to be super focused on whatever I'm working on, I do love having a basketball or a football game going that I can just glance over to every now and then. I do use YouTube TV for those of you that are interested in that. My wife and I cut cable about a year ago and it's been awesome. I actually don't have a keyboard at mouse in this cabinet, I simply use VNC Viewer and Chrome desktop software to remote into the server and control it that way. The next purpose of this server is for Plex, and this is where I store all of my TV shows and my movies. For those of you that don't know, Plex is a free media service that you can download on all your apps like Roku, your phone, or even just your smart TV, and you can stream whatever's on the server, and it works pretty well. The thing I really like about Plex is that all of the hardware transcoding happens on the server side, and as long as you have a beefy enough processor, like I do with my Xeon X3470, I don't ever experience any buffer times or anything like that. If you're rocking a home theater PC like I am in my home theater, I just navigate to the Plex Media Player inside a Chrome browser, select through the very organized list of movies and shows I have, and it's super easy and I'm very happy with it. And finally, the third purpose of this server is my NAS or network attached storage. Right now I have over 15 terabytes of data and I can easily add more because of all these hard drive bays, and this is how both me and my wife back up our files. For this, I don't have an elaborate method or anything yet, I do wanna get a software RAID for these drives set up at some point, but for right now I just have these hard drives set up as shared folders so I can access them from anywhere. This is perfect when I want to transfer files from one PC to another, and it's super important when I'm constantly building new PCs around here, and it's just so much easier than using a flash drive or a USB drive. So yeah, those are the three functions that I'm currently using the server for. Like I said, it's nothing too elaborate or anything right now, but let's dive into the hardware real quick for those of you that are interested in that. The heart and soul of this build is the processor, and for this I just went with the extra Xeon X 3470 that I had laying around the studio. You can always pick up this generation of Xeon CPUs for super cheap on either eBay or AliExpress, and although I do have better CPUs laying around the studio, it's kind of fun using a Xeon processor for what it's intended for, being a server. Other than that, I have 16 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM in there, that's also just extra parts. There's a standard P55 motherboard. I have Windows Server 2019 installed on this 120 gigabyte Intel SSD, a GT 730 because I don't need anything more powerful than that, and I have five various three terabyte hard drives in there for a total of 15 terabytes. Housing all of these parts is the Antec P101 case, and I just want to give a huge thank you to Antec for sending over what I think is possibly a perfect case for these type of server builds. I absolutely love how there's eight 3.5 inch bays so I can continue expanding my storage. All of the panels are lined with this sound dampening material so it stays virtually silent. This front panel opens up so you have access to the five inch bay for like a Blu-ray drive, and honestly, 
honestly, one of my favorite features is how many fans it comes with. All of these black and white fans just look so clean with the color scheme of this build. You can make a build look super baller inside this white and black case, kind of like how I did with the $1,000 white and black gaming PC earlier this week, but because there's no glass side panel, I don't have a problem throwing all my ugly parts in there. With the hardware out of the way, I just wanted to quickly talk about what my future plans are for this home server outside of just this build, and maybe you guys can help me out and give me some ideas down in the comment section. First up, I wanna create a completely separate build for virtualization. I wanna have VMs running for like DHCP, DNS, or even some domain controllers, but the reason why I wanna keep that server separate from this one is because as funny as it may be, this is what I would consider a mission critical item here in my house. I don't like telling my wife that the Plex server is offline, so that's why I definitely wanna keep them separate. Earlier this year, I actually purchased this 1700X, which will be awesome for a hypervisor with its eight cores and 16 threads, but honestly, I just haven't had the time to set up this in a separate case yet. Moving on past the virtualization server goal though, the other main thing I wanna do is figure out how to rip all of my Blu-rays and then install a Blu-ray player into this home server so I can get all of these movies into Plex. I honestly have no idea what type of hardware or software I would need for that. Maybe you guys can help me down in the comment section. But yeah, I think it would be cool to watch my movies in Plex that I actually paid for. Other than that, I do have a lot more goals that I eventually want to incorporate in my home server cabinet. I definitely want to upgrade some of this hardware here, but I think I'll save my bigger ideas for a complete network tour video if you guys want to see that in the future. Well, there you have it. That wraps up my quick tour around my home server and what I want to do next. As always, please drop a comment down below of what you think about my home server or what you think I should do next. After that, feel free to head on over to one of these two videos if you haven't seen them yet, and definitely hit that subscribe button because later next week, I have an interesting graphics card video coming. You don't want to miss that video.